Hello, my name is Valakin for the STO Community Stream Core. Today I've got a build video for you. We're going to be going over a build from start to finish. That means from reaching level 50 for the first time and you have no equipment available to you and what you do and where you go to get your equipment, all the way to advanced building of how you progress your build to a pro level where you have advanced your build to all epic gear and spent half your dilithium or if not all your dilithium. So where do you start out? If you've just reached level 50 you're most probably still doing the story missions. If you are still doing the story missions that's where you need to stay and remain because a lot of gear that is collected is started from the missions. For example there is a multiple four piece sets for both deflector, impulse and warp core and shields from various missions now. There is the Kabali set, the Soul set, the Quantum set, there is free weapons, free consoles that you get from the free missions. Um, there's also a lot of traits that you need to get, personal traits, there's even devices that you're going to be using during uh, STFQs. So this is how you start out your build. First of all you're going to need a ship. I, in the details of this video, have picked a Tholian Meshweaver Escort, Tier 5U. This is roughly about a 5 million EC ship. Um, it's a really good starter ship. It's not a tier 6 like from the Zen store or out of a lockbox. It's available for everybody that can buy. You don't need to spend 6 million EC the moment you get to level 50. You're probably not going to have that amount of money, but you can probably save for it. The reason I've selected this ship is it's a ship that most beginners would want to start to go towards because it's a very good well-rounded ship. It can run part gens, it can run beams, dual beam banks, cannons, whatever you want to play, and has a very good setup for a beginning ship. 6 million EC is very easily obtainable, uh, especially when you have reached just level 50, via crafting materials and selling those, and gathering EC that you have over time by selling stuff. If you've got your starter tier level 40 ship from Vice Admiral, uh, Rear Admiral, then that's okay. As long as it has the ability to put beamfire will on the ship, uh, you should be fine. If you are in an escort of a level 40 ship, you can also run the scatter volleys as well. As long as it has enough to be able to run what I have here on my bridge officer layout to a degree, then you should be fine. So I picked this ship for a reason, uh, mainly because it can run anything. Now where do you, the first thing you need to do is pick up your weapon sets. Now the way to obtain this is weapons you will have will be random. You won't have any decent weapons. Now the main thing about weapons it does not matter about energy type you're looking for modifiers. So for example I have picked the first weapons that you should try to save towards is fleet weapons. These standard fleet weapons out of your fleet will be damage times 3 crit D modifiers. Modifiers are everything on weapons and the damage times 3 crit D is almost a perfect. The only thing that's missing is the modifier pen from crafted weapons. To be able to obtain these you need to join a fleet. Make sure they have fleet weapon access and make sure you save up some fleet credits and dilithium to be able to purchase these. They're quite cheap and very easily obtainable. I think each weapon is roughly about 8,000 fleet credits and 3,000 dilithium. Uh, don't hold that against me but that's just off of pure memory. So these are the weapons you're going to go for. Now it doesn't matter if you pick cannons, dual beam banks or beam rays, they will still have this modifier available to them. Even if you pick phasers and plasmas. So that is your fleet weapon sorted out. Now here I've picked a certain amount of fleet weapons, I've only picked 6 out of the 7 weapons this has available to it because I've put a kinetic cutting beam in here from the Borg tier 1 rep. Very quick to, and easy to obtain. I also linked it with the simulated module so you have the two piece bonus for anti weapon drain. Next up I picked the Kabali set uh, from the missions which is a free easy set, gives you good AoE shield healing, lots of built in healing into the deflector as well as the ability to lower healing uh, cooldowns via the engines. You can run the four piece Kabali set for the nanite screen but I picked the soul shields because I think they're better than the Kabali shields so I'm running a three piece set. Next up is a standard EPS engineering console. You can pick these up from most probably drops via missions or you can just craft one out of engineering. You don't need to have your engineering crafted up to level 15 to craft these. You can just have a very basic mark 12, very rare or you can pick one up on the exchange. 
The reason for this is to be able to have your weapon drain uh, be countered. EPS controls the power flow. So the more you drain out of your weapons, the more EPS you have, the quicker it fuels back into the system, meaning you do more average damage. Science consoles. These are all from the Embassy, so you need to go into your fleet and pick up these. Now don't pick up the Mark 12 versions because they're quite expensive. If you are starting out, you only have a limited amount of fleet credits available to you to how much you can donate. So we've gone for Mark 10s. They're perfectly fine. You're mainly getting them for the proc and the drain for later on. You can upgrade these at a later date. Next up, you're going to have to pick up some tactical mag regulators, very standard. Uh, you can pick up Mark 10s, Mark 11s, rares, as long as you have some mag regulators to buff the damage of your weapons, that's good too. This has obviously has 5. The reason I've chosen the Escort as my beginner ship is because I need the most amount of damage I possibly can get from a starter ship for doing advanced queues. Moving along, now we have the bridge officer stations. I have two abaters. The reason we have beta is because we don't have any pen built into our ship. We have no armor pen traits. We have nothing. The lower resistances the enemy have, the better we're going to be able to do with our easy budget based ship. So we have two betas. We don't have the ability to forward Zemox. We're not going to run an orcs to back build using technicians because we have to go out and get those technicians at a later date. So I'm using two betas, a beta 3, beta 1, giving us a full up time on beta. Same with beamfire will, this can be replaced for scatter volley if you are running cannons. Two tactical teams for up time on uh, tactical team, and this torpedo spread is in here mainly because there's no other slot, there's nothing else I'd like to put in here, and it does give you the option to run a torpedo if you so choose in your build. Next up I have the emergency powder weapons and a reverse shield polarity. Now normally you should have two emergency power abilities, but because this is a starter ship we're going to be quite squishy. We don't have the backup traits that allow us to heal passively continuously. We don't have the resistances to be able to take the damage. We're going to need abilities to soak up damage as much as possible during the beginning phases. So we're running one emergency powder weapons and a reverse shield polarity in the ship. If you're in something like a cruiser, you can pick two emergency power abilities plus also a virtual polarity and an orcs to sif. Now we have a science, we have polarized hull for getting our tractor beams against Borg, because you're probably going to be farming Borg sometimes, as well as other disables. It also gives us a load of resistances to our hull, allowing us to take less damage. Hazimus for removing debuffs and also passively healing. And a gravity well for grouping up targets for our beam via will spam. Duty officers that you want to pick up for a cheap amount of price. There's only two that I can really recommend straight off the bat, which is a warp core engineer, a chance of improving your ship power on use of emergency power ability. You don't have to pick up a very rare one straight away, they're quite expensive. Pick up a green, a rare, anything you can get just so you have the ability to have it available. Next up is a fabrication engineer for increased duration to reverse shield polarity. This one will increase the amount of time reverse shield polarity is up and overall increasing your lifespan. Skills. Here we have a science skill tree. The link to all of this will be down in the description below. But first, we're going to go over why we've chosen the science skill tree. One, it offers up the most amount of damage, especially as a beginner, but two, also for late game as well, for the science ultimates. The 50% crit chance, as well as the ability to increase our opponent's resistance, and also for double healing and shield healing at later game is also extremely good for our passives. This works for part gen builds especially well. It also works for very crit heavy um, ships that go for crit damage weapons instead of damage. But it is one of the best options and offers the most versatility around the tree for both damage and also resistances and engineering and healing. While offering all of the major science perks. You can also go the tactical tree route, where you have the ability to cool down bridge officer abilities in your tactical tree, as well as gain damage over time. Some people like this variant, I prefer the science ultimate variant, it's your choice to make. Next up, specializations. We're going to be going, when you get, as you go up levels, you're going to want to start up putting points into intelligence to work towards the flanking, and also the primary intel tree. 
And then the secondary is Strategist because it offers the most amount of versatility of defense, return fire, and also bridge officer cooldown reduction. And also crit chance, crit severity, and all damage buffs. You can go for the pilot tree, which gives you more versatility of uh, turn rates for a bit larger ships and some immunity in the uh, roll, but Strategist turns out to be better from now on. If you're going to go down a science route, as in you're running a science ship and going to be running part gens mostly on your ships, you'll probably want to take out Intelligence and swap it for Temporal Operative. The reason I start off Intelligence for a build like this is because it favours beam builds without part gens very well. If you are going to go down the part gen route including a beam ship, as this ship will do, you'll then want to start investing into Temporal Operative at a later date. And that pretty much covers our basis of a basic build. Oh, no, there is the traits. These are the standard traits that are free right off the bat, also very cheap off the exchange. The only two, build, only two traits off this build that are from the exchange are the secret command codes and automated rerouting. They're very cheap defensive traits off the exchange, only a couple, uh, 100,000 to 300,000 roughly. Everything else is from missions and also you get straight off the bat from your standard traits. We don't have any starship traits or space rep because we're going to go on the assumption we don't have those yet. Then where do we go from here? How do we upgrade this ship? Well the first thing you're going to be working on your rep and you'll slowly be replacing your uh, main cores that you started out with. The first thing we're going to do is replace our entire set piece. Because this is an energy build, we're going to go straight into an Iconian set. The Iconian set benefits full energy builds because it offers the most amount of damage and defense for energy builds. And there we are of our Iconian set. We have a 3 piece for 45% all damage and also a 4 piece for the plus 30% all damage bonus. This gives us the most amount of defense of debuff removal and also damage output for energy weapons. Of course, this will have to go up to Iconium tier 5 for the shields, but it's a work in progress. It's how you slowly develop your build. You can start your, with your deflector, then your engines, then your core, and you can still have like the soul shields, for example, uh, in the background until you can replace them. Next up, we want to get rid of this kinetic cutting beam and replace it with another weapon. The reason for this is we want the most amount of damage output and the an actual NG weapon does more than the kinetic cutting beam does because we're going to replace the ability to manage our weapons. Next up we're going to upgrade our EPS for a cheap price because now we've invested in R&D and we are able to make tech upgrades or we have enough money to afford them. Next up we also want to upgrade our science consoles. The proc from these are extremely good at Mark 14 Epic and these are going to be the first thing you upgrade afterwards. So that is now our stuff upgraded that we got our first epic items going into advanced. We're not going into pro, this is just advanced, how we upgrade our build slowly. Next up we want to slowly upgrade our weapons. Now obviously this is quite an expensive task of getting into Mark 14. We're not planning to get them to epic anytime soon because these are not going to be our end game weapons. We will want crafted weapons in the end game or at least maybe weapons that have better modifiers with a preferred energy type. But these are our starters, and we're going to have these for quite some time. And if you're going to be able to do advanced queues with ease, you're going to have to have Mark 14 weaponry. Now we have our weapons upgraded, what do we do next? Well, we're in a fleet. Now these are the most expensive parts, but we're going to be slowly replacing the tactical consoles. I'm only going to put one in here so we know what we're going to get, but we're going to try and save up for five locators, and then we will upgrade them as soon as possible. Now because I have anti-proton, we're going to pick the anti-proton one. But this is the stage in which you decide what is my future weapons going to be. For example, because these tactical consoles cost so much, you're going to have to stick with an NG type. Especially if you're going out buying five of them, it's 250,000 fleet credits and a lot of dilithium. So you don't want to be able to buy one whole set and then realize you want a different whole set because you're going for a different energy type. At this point you now select, do I want to change my weapon types? If so, and you still and you started off with Phaser, Antipodal, Plasma, Advanced Fleet Weapons and now you want to go say Disruptor, buy the Disruptor Tactical Consoles because they will eventually be the ones you have. 
and for the current weapons you use, just stick with the current mag regulators you have. While you slowly gather the tactical consoles, you can also slowly gather the weapons you desire. Next up, we want to replace this engineering console, this simulated module. It's an okay mo uh, module, but it's not brilliant. It offers us some crit chance, some crit severity, but now we've got rid of the kinetic cunning beam, it's not so great. So what do we replace it with? Well, we replace it with a plasmonic leech. These are no longer super expensive anymore, they're no longer 60 million, they're now down to 15 million as of this video's creation, and that's the reason why we got Drain X in our science consoles. It's to go with our plasmonic leech, so you bought these in preparation for your build to advance. Now we have plenty of Drain for weapon power, as well as shields and auxiliary power to amp up our weapons even further. Next up, we're going to change up our build a little bit. We're going to want more damage uptime, so now we're going to have two emergency power weapons, which is bringing a double emergency power. And from there on, our rest of our bridge of officer abilities stay the same. There's not much more we can do here until we get proper duty officers to support what we want to do next, as well as achieving more EC to gain stuff like chemocyte. At this point you could possibly buy a chemocyte lace weapon too if you have managed to save up enough money. Next up we're going to have to start investing in more duty officers. Uh, eventually we're going to need duty officers to support the rest of our ship. And so far we've only got two and we have the ability to have a lot more. So at this point I'm going to put in my notes that we're going to try and get some more damage in our ship. The more damage we have the better we'll do. So we're going to try and invest in some energy weapon officers with crit severity. Now the very rare ones are very expensive but we can pick up some greens. The prop chance is only lowered by 1% and it will still activate. And we can also pick up an energy weapon officer with crit chance. And that will also be a green. This is going to amp up our uh, the ability to gain crit chance and crit severity for our weapons, overall doing more damage over time. Next up is our traits. Well we need to work on our space reputations, we have none of those but we've been slowly working on our rep. So what do we start out with? Well, auxiliary to offense. We're gaining power levels, the more auxiliary we have, the more overall damage we do and that improves our weapon damage. Secondly, we're going to want more overall damage overall, so we need more resistance, debuff. Advanced armor penetration. We've been working on our Iconium rep, that's in there. Secondly, we're going to want crit chance from the Romulan rep and also crit severity from the Delta rep. So now we've got four. We don't have our fifth slot yet, we haven't gone and bought that, it's very expensive. That is our four slots for the meantime. If you want more survivability and you're struggling to live, you could replace the crit severity with the damage that does healing over time. Energy Refrequencer, your directed energy attacks heal you for a portion of the damage dealt to allow you a little bit more survivability. Starship Traits, if you start decide to invest in specialization piloting, you can also get the Pedal to the Metal trait. This is a free trait available to you and will give you a damage boost. Improved Pedal to the Metal comes from completing the whole of the pilot tree. Secondly, another Starship trait you've probably most probably picked up by this point is if you're going down the Intel tree, predictive algorithms trait from Intel. So that's another free trait available. Next up we're going to have to improve our personal traits because we've now getting more EC we want to replace some of these. So the first one I recommend picking up is a blade of shell. A blade of shell is an extremely good defensive trait and is able to be picked up for roughly around 8 to 10 million. Uh, it procs and works very well with secret command codes so very much worth picking up. Next up, we were working on our crafting, so we're going to get our beam barrage from level 15 in beams. And to also replace our techie, we could probably replace this with another trait which costs EC of the exchange unless you got it in a lockbox. But you could replace it with something better, which will be self-modulating fire. It's not the best trait and it won't be there late game, but it's a good reasonable amount of price and does give you a good shield pen proc. Otherwise most of the traits from here on out are going to be pretty expensive or work towards a different type of build. And that is now our build upgraded and advanced. 
Next we're going to go towards how do we go from pro level here, how do we change up our ship so it now becomes a real beast to contend with with elite queues. Well, first of all, we're going to have to put all these tactical consoles in because we're going to have these at some point. These have, as we've got them, we've upgraded them to epic one by one and now we have a full collection of them. We have the most amount of damage we can do with these and it's very easily obtainable. Now I also have replaced my weapons. I've either upgraded these advanced fleet weapons to epic or I focused down a crafting route and decided to get crafted weapons. Let's say I decided to stick with anti-proton and I've now got crafted anti-proton weapons. Because I'm a tactical officer I have decided to go for the damage modifier for more consistent DPS and I've now crafted myself some anti-proton beam arrays. Uh, I've stuck with beam arrays, I've gone dual beam banks and I've managed to get the ultimate ones of damage times 3 pens. If you decide to go down a crafting route but and you wanted to replace your weapons uh, NG type and the only way to do that was going into crafted weapons to get better ones, you could have gone damage times 2 crit D or damage times 3 crit D instead of pen weapons, you know, cheaper weapons you've managed to pick up from the exchange with the, at least you got the modifiers of at least damage or crit D. And there we are, we've upgraded our weapons, so we've now got epic weapons, epic tactical consoles, epic science consoles and epic engineering consoles. Uh, I'm not going to replace my EPS console with a conductive RCS EPS because I've been, let's say I've been very unlucky with crafting those out of R&D engineering and I can't afford to buy off the exchange, it's probably going to be the last thing I replace because it's one of the most expensive consoles in the game. What I can do now is advance my build further so it has more consistent damage and survivability. I've decided I'm going to get rid of my beta 1 and I have a full uptime on beta 3 but how should I accomplish this? I'm not running the tactical tree. Uh, ultimate to lower this cooldown. So instead, I've decided I'm going to go for Zemok Genro. There are other equivalents to this, but basically, I'm going to have two of these guys. They're quite expensive, but what he does is he lowers attack pattern CDR. So now I have two of him. My beta is now on a universal cooldown, like I have two of them. I have two beamfire wills, that's okay, but now I'm also going to put in another chemocyte to have that uptime. And now I have two tactical teams, two chemocytes, two beamfire wills, and a beta 3 maximum uptime for maximum amount of re damage resistances. I'm going to keep my two much better weapons because that's going to go over a trait that I'm going to pick up at a later date. And now I can change my science con uh, abilities. I've picked up more survivability, or going to, and I'm going to now go down the lines of part gens to increase my DPS further. My survivability is being managed in other departments so now I can focus on other things. I'm a very AOE based ship and I'm not forward facing so I'm going to go for a gravity well subspace vortex here to allow more AOE damage in my build. Another thing I could do is because I got the most amount of damage maybe I might be taking aggro. I could add a feedback pulse to my build so as people the enemy hits me, they hit themselves and I gain damage that way and I can put my subspace vortex on immobile targets or groups of enemies. There's various amount of choices. I could also use tractor mirror pulses. There is plenty of options available to you. Because I've now done this, I'm going to, the drain on my ship is no longer needed. Uh, I'm going to have starship traits that are going to replace the energy levels. So now I'm going to swap out the science consoles. I'm going to keep them as nullifiers and not amplifiers. And instead, I'm going to now put them as part gens. I may have even moved to another ship by this point. Maybe I've decided to invest in a ship from the Zen store. I've maybe invested in enough EC to be able to get a better ship off the exchange, a tier six ship. But either way, I can do just as much as they can in this tier five U. Now I've invested in part gens on my science consoles. Uh, I can keep this plasmic leech if I want to for my NG weapons, that's fine. I have enough drain in both my skill tree and here, but I'm going to have starship traits, so I've picked up other ships. Uh, the main ship I'd want to pick up first would be a Lubai ship, and I've put, saved up enough EC to buy it, and I've picked up the supremacy trait. I've also gone to the, ex 
Zen store, and I've now decided to pick up another trait to help my builds further. No matter what ship I'm going to be in, as long as I'm using energy weapons, these are going to be the starship traits I'm using. So another one will be the Arbiter, and I probably will probably switch to the Arbiter as my main ship, but for the sake of this video, emergency battle weapons on there. And secondly, I'm also going to pick up all hands on deck from a command ship. Now I have all of the three basic main starship traits I need to prepare myself. Now to take myself even further, I could go down the lines of picking up a invincible trait from the Zal Heavy Cruiser. At this point now, this is just stuff. If I get more EC, I can just upgrade my ship further. It's basically at this point, it's just more EC, more EC, and more EC. There's not much else to it. At this point, it's whatever you can afford. I've also got the ability to get my fifth starship trait. Maybe I've unlocked this slot. Um, for this sake of this ship, I'm going to go off the defense because it's quite a squishy ship. But I could go engine power. I could go the healing as well while dealing damage, which is most probably the most likely one I could go for uh, while keeping the damage I already have as obtained. Personal traits, I'm now going to swap out my nano repair matrix for a biotech patch. I'm now going to swap out my self modulating fire for the abilities to lose aggro from failsafe scrambler. I'm also going to lose my last ditch effort for something more versatile like inspirational leader. Or I could even go down the lines of going, because I have gone part gens, I'm going to need the particle manipulator from the science RD. And that's most probably where I'll finish. Uh, it gives me all the buffs I possibly need and the defense and passive healing to replace the stuff I have lost in the rest of my build. And I've still got my NG weapons officers, my Zemok Gen Rose in here. And from the rest of my ship and my duty officers, I'm going to replace my Warp Core Engineer with the Warp Core Engineer that removes debuffs. And that's pretty much my build now finished at late game. I could upgrade these to Epic, obviously. Uh, the warp most probably the amp is probably the first one you want to tame, so you want to upgrade your warp core to ultra rare. But that's pretty much now the build finished to the point of late game to be able to do elites. Uh, I've maximized my damage output uh, at a gradual rate as well as my survivability uh, as I've been able to gain EC while maintaining a balanced ship all the way through as long as you can know exactly what you're going to get next. And that's pretty much it ladies and gentlemen. Um, obviously depending on the ship depends on different bridge officer abilities, different things you obtain. For science, it goes down a different route of more science abilities and you get the part gens first. But the way this video was supposed to show is how you upgrade your ship from the very basics of having no money and no dilithium to the end game and how you do it slowly. As for how you obtain that EC and dilithium, you can wait for a different video. Anyway guys, thanks so much. Please make sure to come and check out my stream. I do stream on twitch.tv slash uh, I stream every Monday to Friday from 5.30pm GMT, that's British time, to 10.30pm GMT. I also stream other games throughout the week. You can see my schedule on that site, the link is down below and here on the screen. Um, come check us out, you can request builds, uh, share the community, have a good time, join STFs and hopefully you'll learn a lot. And I'll see you all very soon.